Hello everyone and welcome to the video where today I am going to be taking a look at the Westland Scout and the Westland Wasp. These are the tier 5 helicopters for the British in War Thunder, both of which sit at a battle rating of 8.7, with the Scout being the starter helicopter and the Wasp being the first helicopter you will actually have to grind out. From a quick glance, you can easily tell that these helicopters are related. Historically, both of these are derived from the Saunders Row P531 helicopter, which is obvious as the basic airframe and the power plant are essentially the same with these helicopters. But of course, there are some noticeable differences. Firstly, the gear design. The Scout sports a skid configuration, whereas the Wasp employs a wheeled design. This was to allow it to be more easily handled on the decks of naval vessels, as of course the Wasp was a naval helicopter, whereas the Scout was the army variant. Some other minor differences include the design of the horizontal stabilizer between the two helicopters. The rear canopy on the Scout also features a bulge on either side, whereas the Wasp does not. And a final noticeable difference is the inflatable emergency floats on the Wasp mounted either side of the canopy. The helicopter was top heavy, so these were simply added as a safety measure in the case of a ditching in the ocean. Now the Wasp is the heavier of the two helicopters, and despite a fair increase in the power from its engine, it is still in fact the slower of the two. It also has less weapons. Both helicopters primarily use the AGM-22 anti-tank guided missile, also known as the SS-11. Now four of these can be carried by each helicopter on their pylons, and for the Wasp that is it, the only weapon that that has access to. The Scout on the other hand though does receive a pair of 7.62mm machine guns mounted on the skids. These do have fairly limited use in ground battles and assault mode, but in helicopter battles they can be useful for picking up a few more light targets, and in terms of grinding early modifications on the heli, that can actually be quite useful. In terms of additional features, you get basic night vision, also known as NVD, but aside from that, you don't get much else, which is to be expected of an early helicopter such as this. Going on to camouflage options, both helicopters do have two different camouflage schemes. I'm not really bothered with the options on the Scout, although the variety is appreciated, but for the Wasp, the secondary camouflage option is a real lifeline for me personally, as I just do not like the stock colour whatsoever. The game modes available for these helicopters consist of Ground, RB and SB, Tank Assault and Helicopter Battles. In this video, we're going to be looking mainly at Ground RB, but to start off, we are going to have a quick look at Helicopter Battles and Ground Assault. So getting into helicopter battles, the first thing to state is that the Scout and the Wasp are not in line with this game mode's meta whatsoever. The lack of countermeasures is one big drawback that means that air-to-air -air missiles will kill you quite a lot. Well that more or less sums it up, let's move on to the next game mode. Okay, well, as you probably guessed, there are one or two more things to discuss about this mode. Firstly, as previously mentioned, the Scout does of course have two machine guns, and that will allow you to rake in a few more light target kills per flyout. At least more than the Wasp would get, as that only has some ATGMs. Being able to kill some more light targets with those guns does of course mean you can rake in a bit more RP and SL per flyout, this allows you to research the early modifications a bit quicker, which overall is quite useful. Both of these helis are of course armed with four AGM-22 anti-tank guided missiles from being completely stock, and they can be used against enemy helicopters, although due to being early generation ATGMs, their agility is fairly lackluster, which will make hitting a moving target fairly difficult, although with practice, this can of course be done. Overall in this mode, the lack of countermeasures is the main drawback for these helicopters, which means you can do literally nothing about an air-to-air -air missile coming your way. Although with a sneaky enough pilot at the controls, you will be able to do fairly well on maps such as Vietnam and Afghanistan if you can successfully flank the more advanced enemy helicopters, you can then attack them from the side or behind using your ATGMs. Moving into Ground Assault, this is a relatively new mode for heli pilots, and generally speaking, you can do quite well killing enemy tanks as they move towards your ground zone. Of course, you only have 4 ATGMs, and once they run out, you will need to wait for them to reload, which can hinder your performance a little bit. 
Now the main threat against you in this mode will be enemy aircraft and enemy SPAA vehicles. The aircraft can be relatively easily dodged, but shooting them down is not exactly something you are well equipped to do. SPAA on the other hand will die easily to your missiles if you can get close enough. And usually you can't before they shoot you out the sky because in this mode the SPAA vehicles can shoot at you from incredibly long range and generally speaking are incredibly accurate. Assault with Helis is a mode that I've been playing a fair bit recently and the Scout and the Wasp are usable but certainly not a preferred choice for me in this mode. So now moving on to ground RB, we're going to have two games, one in the Scout and then one in the Wasp. And before I get into that, I do want to say, as of the last War Thunder update at the time of making this video, helicopters now have to fly from the friendly airfield all the way to the ground forces map rather than spawning at the previous helipad near the ground forces map. The helipad is still there, you can rearm there once you've used your armament, but your initial spawn you will have to go all the way from the airfield. And with the scout and the wasp, well they're not exactly the fastest helicopter, so this can take quite a while. So getting into our first game on Normandy, of course we're in the Scout, which is the starter helicopter for the British, and if you want to know how to get that, it's fairly simple. If you own a, either a British tank or a British aircraft of Tier 5, you will then be able to buy this heli for SL. You don't need to research it, you just need to buy it for the Silver Lions. First target, VT-1, obviously it's a self-propelled gun, two guns, very quick but also not much armor. I knock out his engine and track, then the second ATGM gets a solid hit to the side, knocking out the crew and also damaging various other components. I'm then scouting out for another target. I do then get shot at from the distance, but that also then allows me to spot this Type 89, who is rushing towards a friendly point. Solid hit to the back, knocks out majority of the crew, but luckily the hull brake mechanic is what gives me that kill. A big positive of these helicopters is the 8.7 battle rating. This of course means that when you're in these ground games, you are still facing anti-aircraft vehicles with radar, but you're not having to deal with surface-to-air missiles or anything too deadly. The biggest threat to you is aircraft, which is fair enough, but if you're fairly sensible and you keep a good eye out, you can likely avoid the aircraft by, you know, hiding, staying low, and also you can stay a fair distance from the tank battlefield just within your ATGM range, grab some kills, the ground vehicles machine gunning and shooting at you shouldn't be too much of a threat, and you should be able to get some decent games. Like this Leopard, I'm a bit too far away for his machine guns to actually do much, and I get a solid hit to the engine, and then my second missile goes in and knocks out the remainder of his crew. That gave me my fourth kill of the game. Overall, a decent match. I was not actually hit by any enemy vehicles. I ran out of my ATGMs, went back, got some more from the helipad, and that was the end of the game. Eighth on the team, four kills, and a victory. A fairly decent game there for the Westland Scout. So now moving on to the Wasp. This is my preferred of the two, personally, despite the lack of the machine guns, mainly down to the wheel design, which I just generally prefer for aesthetic reasons, but also the paint scheme. The second skin is really nice, in my opinion, the naval camouflage, so that is certainly a positive for me. First kill, as you saw, was on a T-55AM from the side. I was able to flank quite nicely, get to the side of the enemy forces. There was an enemy heli, but he quickly gets disposed of by some other friendly vehicles. Uh, obviously a marker comes up showing me where some enemy vehicles are, get a visual sight on that vehicle, ATGM goes in, solid hit to the side, and that is a T-10M taken out. These ATGMs have 600 millimeters of penetration, so they can pen some of these heavy tanks, but sometimes they just do minor damage or only knock out uh, a small percentage of the crew, but luckily in that case, I knocked out the entire crew, and that was a good kill. Another T-10M, nice side hit, knocked out the crew, that was another kill. Almost get a fourth kill right away with this Centuro. Unfortunately, the ATGM just goes in front, so then I have to return to base and reload my missiles. Landing the Wasp is fairly simple. Uh, I just land it like an aircraft. I do this for most helis, to be honest. Bit of a bumpy landing, but nonetheless, the gear did hold up. Do a little drift, stop it as quick as possible, and then I can get onto reloading those missiles. And once I had done that, head back to the battlefield. And at this point in the game, we were spawn camping them, we had the A point, it was the end of the game, there were just a few of them left. Got a hit on uh, that enemy tank, he then gets killed just before my second missile gets in, but I do get an assist for that. And then a Type 87 spawns, Japanese anti-aircraft vehicle, 
he's got radar, he can lock on to me. So my preference, of course, is not to die, therefore I fire a missile at him. And luckily for me, his spawn protection ends just before my missile hits, allowing me to hull break him, get that kill, and that is my fourth and final kill of this match. I then go and land the heli again because, you know, I thought, I was thinking that the game might not end, but it did, all the enemies were dead, four kills, one assist, and third on the team. Not too bad whatsoever. So to get into a little conclusion, uh, the Scout and the Wasp, I would actually say, are pretty decent starter helicopters. Uh, by no means the best starter helicopter, but they are definitely usable and you can have some good fun in them. Helicopter battles, personally, I wouldn't advise bothering with that mode until it's changed or made a bit more fair for early helicopters without countermeasures and such. Tank Assault, um, perfectly, you can use them in there perfectly, although I wouldn't advise using this as the main vehicle on your lineup for Tank Assault. Take it in a lineup with, say, the Shot Cal Delay, maybe even just with, like, some Challengers, chuck this in your lineup, you can use it to get a few kills. Ground battles, though, is certainly the place where I would mainly advise for you to use this helicopter. Right off the bat, from being a stock heli, this can be used highly effectively. You don't even need any mods necessarily, considering that your main weapon, the ATGMs, the AGM-22 missiles, come straight away from being a stock heli. So you can go straight, you can buy the heli, go straight into a ground battle, fully stock, and you can get yourself a few kills, which is certainly quite fun. At a BR of 8.7, you will not be facing any surface-to-air missiles. Radar, radar sort of, SPAAs with radar will be an issue, but in majority of cases, you will be able to dodge their shots, and if you stay low, they mostly won't be a problem. Aircraft are your main threat, just keep a good eye out. If you can get maps with trees and just generally things that you can hide behind, you can also, for the most part, negate the threat of enemy aircraft seeing you. Nonetheless, though, I have actually enjoyed playing these helis much more than expected. Um, I did do some sim gameplay with the Wasp recently on a live stream, got four kills, only got, I died once, got four kills, I wouldn't say that's too bad, and actually I did enjoy it in sim as well, although of course that very much depends on what the sim lineup is on that day. Generally though, very good starter helis, I have enjoyed them very much. Once I have spaded both of these, I'll then move on to spading the Tech Tree Lynx AH Mark 1, and hopefully in the future the British Tech Tree will get their Apache AH Mark 1 at some point. Anyway though, thank you very much for watching, if you did enjoy, please consider dropping a like, maybe even subscribe to the channel if you do, that would be massively appreciated. Thanks again for watching, and I will see you in the next one.